if you want to start making video games and you don't want to learn to code, well, there's the visual scripting. And this video might be the right one for you because this might help you to start. Hello guys, Andrew from Yellow Hat Games here. Today we're going to see four engines that don't use coding, but they use visual scripting. Now, if you watched my last video, we were talking about Godot that said bye bye to visual scripting. And that made me a little bit wonder because, you know, my background story, I said in that video, I started by using visual scripting because I just wanted to make video games. I thought, hey, wait a minute, if there is people out there that wants to make video games but don't know how to code and wants just to make video games in an easy way, I need to make this video and show them that they can do this. Let's start. We're going to see four engines today. I'm not used to all of those. I just used one of those for my in my career and it's clicked infusion now the first one is clicked infusion now like you can see i'm i'm showing you my old project here i'm going to bring this project on godot so if you want to see more about this just follow me this may come about october or november and we're going to make it a commercial and full game so just follow me on twitch if you want more news about that anyway follow me on this channel as well because on this channel i'm going to put the vlogs about this project as well like you can see it's working it has particles it has camera shaking it's all you need for making 2d games how does click infusion works well there are two main objects here we have an active and we have a backdrop now an active is just like the word says, it is active, it moves, it collides, it destroys things, it can be destroyed by, by code, by, by scripting basically. While backdrops don't, don't have all these abilities, but they can have collision. So basically actives can collide with backdrops. If you want to code, give some movement, well, you can use some predefined ones. You just go here under properties, movement, and you can choose one of those. There is a bouncing ball, path, eight direction, platform, and so on. But if you want to give this some advanced and your personalized ones, well, you just need to go under event editor. Like you can see, there are different icons here. There are some predefined ones, player one, mouse, keyboard, and, and so on, basically. And there are other ones that are my icons. Now, the important fact is that you can see that there are some groups here. Groups are basically chunks of code that you can activate and deactivate. Groups are important because they make your code look better. You can read better coding here, but you can decide to activate and deactivate some parts of the code. So that this is quite important. How does this work? How does events work? There are some conditions that trigger some events. Now, how does this work? Basically, you just click new condition with your right mouse click and there are these special ones, always, never, and so on. You have some inputs, joystick, basically, you, you just check for the input, the player, or the keyboard, or the mouse as well. And you can check as well variables inside your objects because there are flags, variables, and so on. After you decide, for example, on start of frame, now you can decide what this condition can trigger and you just go under your your active for example and you can set the position basically or you can input some coordinates by typing numbers and like you saw basically this is what i did with this it moves it collides there's some camera shaking and there's some particle as well now next project we're going to see is gdevelop it's fully free and it can run on browser as well so that's great and let's give it a look now like you can see all this kind of software basically these game engines have have some similarities between them you have elements on your game and those elements basically can have some conditions this is an example from the game directly from the game engine and like you can see, you can make basically a platformer. You can ride ropes, jump, and you can jump, it, collect coins basically, jump on the, on the head of these little monsters. And that's all basically, that's all, that's great. Now let's give it a look how this works. Now, if you select the player, you just go here, edit object and and this window will pop up you have all the properties you have the name and you have the animation basically 
This is quite important because the names of the animation, you can call them during your script, your code, or you can access to this animation by tapping zero, one, because this is kind of an indexed thing. Now, there are the behaviors, are these movements, movesets that you can add and you can use. They are already coded by, by the engine. The engine comes with this by default. You can definitely create your own behaviors, but you can use this as well. Like we can see, there is the platformer object that we're using here. We have gravity, we have some variables here that we can change and we can decide the ladder if we want to climb it the, the speed of climbing and so on basically another important thing there are the variables dead and effects okay now if we go on the main events here basically you can see how this works it is quite familiar with collective fusion there are groups subgroups there are some comments and everything is quite readable. So if we open the controlling of the character, basically this group here, we have mobile touching controls and gamepad controls, basically. And if we see there is at the beginning of a scene, this condition here basically works the same like click infusion. You add conditions and trigger some events. They define that no mouse movement or cursor while touching the screen basically is going to happen. If we double click this, we can definitely change it, but we don't really want that because we're just watching. Now, how does this work? This works the same way, basically. We just click here, add an event. We can decide our player. And what want we to check? What is the condition of our player? Basically, I can decide if it is falling. Okay. The player is falling. So we can decide to interact with the objects inside the game that we're using, like platform, all this stuff here, or we have other actions. There's the search bar as well, so you can use other stuff as well. So if I go here, object, create an object, for example, I can create a coin. Now, uh, the position is going to be, for example, random, random, okay, random number, and this is going to be the same. So basically, it's each time I'm going to fall, this is going to create a coin. Let's see what is going to happen. Look at this. Okay, it's creating a lot of monsters, basically. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I just made a mistake there. I just wanted the coins, basically. <laughs> okay, see, see now what happens. Each time I'm going to, you know, run down, it's going to create coins. New coins are spawning each time I go down, basically. <laughs> a lot of big money and coins are having that. You can understand everything in more or less one hour. So I think that you can do this. This is totally usable. You can export your projects and please give it a look. Give it a chance. This might be your entry point. Now, the next one is going to be GameMaker Studio 2. This software isn't free, so you have to pay this or you can use the free version that it's a little bit limited. It's just to test kind of things, you know, prototyping your stuff. And then when you're ready to go on, to move on, you just buy the license. Now, GameMaker is quite famous. There are big games that were made with GameMaker. The scripting language or the visual la uh, language is quite advanced, but I think that you need to learn this. You need to put more effort on learning this. Okay, this is what you can make with GameMaker. This is, you can move. You know, your player can move. There are some monsters, like you can see, is going to attack you if you go near to its path. And you, I think, can collect coins, but there's there are no coins because you need to put them, because this is kind of a tutorial to make you, to make you understand how this thing works. Now, how does this work? Well, it's kind of the same, like I said. You have here your levels, sound. If you see, there are the collision boxes here. There are the sound sources here. And there's some lighting. These are just effects, basically. Okay? Nothing special, really. Every engine can make most of this stuff. And these are the enemy paths, basically. And you can change them. You can add points. Here it, here it goes. 
Uh, if I want this this guy to move differently, it can moves differently basically. Uh, let's select this one, this other one here. Here it goes. Uh, if I want it to move a little bit different, like you can see, he can move different. Okay, look look it now. Like you can see, it's making some different paths now. The paths are <laughs> definitely wrong, are not the same like they were before. You can do a lot of stuff with, with the game maker. It's quite advanced and powerful. So basically, here there are instances. Now, if you go here, select instances, go under the player, and you just double click it, edit object, it's going to open this, these events here. There are some events. They work like this. You can add an event and you can decide what kind of event. Now, events, like I said, there are conditions that need to be checked. If they're true, they're going to trigger some event. There is on create, basically, if you double click this. Now, you can see that we assign on create some numbers to this variable, some values, basically. Four to the move speed and zero to the coins. Now, if we go here, if the key is pressed left, basically, we move on the X coordinate. We can change the pride, basically, and we can change the instance scale, basically, to make it flip. If you work with scale, if you make negative scaling, basically, it's going to make it flip. That's why here it's minus one. Now, I'm going to add something to this player. I'm going to add an event. It's going to be K down. Sorry guys, the camera just <laughs> the camera just finished the the battery. So sorry for this. Now, like I was saying, I never used Game Maker, so this is my first time. And what is going to happen? Basically, here we have some events, and what I'm going to do is basically go here and trigger something if the you know the space is down. Basically, let's see. I can create probably something. Let's let's see here. Create create instance. Okay object noon I, I need to choose an object here okay uh, ba, 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 ba. a barrel barrel big i don't know if i can create that but um, now relative to is this going to be relative okay i have no idea if this is going to work <laughs> though okay but that's fine that's fine here we are let's see if it's going to work i i'm not sure now just run this and let's see if it's going to work. <laughs> it's going to work. Okay, here we are. Let's go and let's play. Now, I don't know. Okay, we created a bell. <laughs> That's nice, but we're kind of inside the collision shape, so we need to change that. And basically, let's see what can I do with this. Let's open. We create this barrel, but we're going to move it uh, minus... Um, in front of us so it's going to be plus 100 okay it's going to be fine let's go let's go like you can see it's quite easy to understand this kind of engines i never used it but i can make this thing now like you can see here it goes pam i can't move <laughs> my myself anymore in front of me <laughs> like you can see more you you keep it doing it's going basically creating a few barrels here and there that's not good but actually this was the point you can make games with this stuff i just put myself inside of this and i created something because even though i never used it so you can use game maker for making big games huge games it's great it's great okay last but not least we're going to see construct 3 and this is a paid software as well it can run on browser and I think it's easy as well. Now, sadly, I didn't find any demo here, but we're going to follow one of those, basically. Tutorials, maybe. Let's see, tutorials here. Okay, there are some tutorials. Okay, we're going to launch the guided tour. Okay, okay. Okay, we click on new, create, next. Okay, double click to create something, a sprite. We're going to add it. Uh, okay, I can drag and drop it. It seems working. Okay, very nice. We can close it. It's, this is kind of step by step, so you can definitely use it. Okay, player. 
this is how fast you can make things here basically okay next and next again okay behaviors we can have some behaviors platformer it's kind of very easy constructs comes with default behaviors like the other engines so you can use them if you want but you can call your ones as well but some of those are the way to start with so just add the new one okay i'm kind of just typing <laughs> everything now double click to add a new a uh, new object we're going to add you know this background here and i just can drag and drop it okay and i can give some events as well i think it's going to be a, sol a solid because it, it's going to have you know collision activated okay let me do this thing here very good and okay we can play it here it is that's all what we needed basically we did it with a few clicks it wasn't that great because i kind of skipped everything but you can see it's moving it's working now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to 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 put some 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 stuff here let's see if i can do it okay okay no I, i'm not going to click it okay that's fine okay pretty nice can we add another thing a sprite okay this is going to be a tomato <laughs> we're going to get this tomato here tomato tomato or tomato tomato huh? so basically i'm going to drag and drop okay there are some tomatoes here we have them and double click we add some movement basically so some input and just we go here on the events just add an event the player okay collision on another object basically it's going to get the tomato and the tomato is going to be deleted it's quite easy it's quite easy now another event if we press something what we're going to use we're going to use left arrow key okay i think that now we're trying to change the direction basically of the player okay that that's that's what is going to 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 say okay done okay we can add another one we're going to move on the right basically we're going to choose okay okay that's fine last but not least we're going to mirror it as well okay not mirror it not mirror it done and that's all now if we play it we're going to move left and right we're going to move our sprite to to flip it left and right and we're going to get the tomatoes okay guys like you watched isn't it hard to make games with these softwares so choose one and just go on and start your game dev journey and i'm quite curious so let me know down in the comments if you are a beginner and this video helped you and what software are you using or you're going to use and if you're not a beginner what software are you using as well for making your games and if you want you can share your games with me as well just send links down in the comments i'll do my best to check those games i'm andrew from yellow hat games thank you for watching leave a like subscribe turn on the bell notification to not lose any of my videos and more importantly Keep diving games!